One of the biggest mysteries in human history is when people first arrived in the Americas. Who were these people? How did they get there? And what clues do genetics and archaeology reveal? The answers are still elusive, but the story of the first Americans may be far older and more complex than we once thought. So, for a very long time, the consensus was around a theory called Clovis First. The theory, in simple terms, was that humans first arrived in the Americas around 13,000 years ago, crossing from Siberia to Alaska. At around this time, the hemisphere was still home to mastodons, armored rhinos, American lions, and saber-toothed cats, beavers the size of armchairs, turtles as big as cars, and giant ground sloths. Then, within a couple of hundred years, almost every one of these species vanished. The fact that these species died was not just ecologically significant. The Americas had three species of horse and at least two camels. If these had been domesticated, along with some of the other mammals that could have been kept for meat and milk, then the consequences would have been simply enormous. I'm jumping ahead in the story a little bit, but when the Europeans arrived, they brought diseases that utterly devastated the Native American populations. We're talking as high as 90%. Most of these diseases originally jumped to humans as a result of living closely with animals, which was common throughout the old world, but much less common in the new world. If more of these animals had survived to be domesticated, the Americas probably would have developed a whole lot more in the way of zoonotic diseases, and the impact of diseases coming from old world to new might have not been such a one-way street. And if Europe, Asia, and Africa had been as devastated as the Americas were, then the world would look very different today. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. So around the same time as the megafauna disappeared, human remains and artifacts began to appear across North America. This was the Clovis culture, named after the style of point on their spears. It seemed like a pretty straightforward story, but there were always archaeological sites that seemed older, which were explained away as carbon dating mistakes. There's still uncertainty, but this is what we know. The closest connection between the Americas and Eurasia is up in Siberia. Crossing from Siberia when the world was colder, sea levels were lower, and a land bridge had formed connecting Asia and the Americas, these people then spread throughout North and South America, finding an environment with lots of new animals to hunt, and were reproducing at incredible rates, filling the hemisphere with people in perhaps a thousand years. That's probably what we see in the almost instantaneous appearance of these Clovis artifacts and then mass extinctions of mammals. Extinctions similar to what occurred when humans first arrived in Madagascar or Australia or New Zealand. That is a simple and easy to understand story. But the problem was that we kept finding little bits of evidence that just didn't fit that story. Instead of 13,000 years ago, archaeologists kept making finds that were dated to 20,000 years ago even 30,000 years ago. But the really fascinating field is in genetics, made possible by a revolution in the cost of DNA sequencing and techniques in extracting DNA from ancient bones. While genetics confirms that the closest modern relatives of today's Native Americans are the peoples of Eastern Siberia, there is a wrinkle. A few groups in the Amazon are actually distantly related to the Aboriginal peoples of Australia and Papua New Guinea. To be clear, the implication here is not that Papuans or Australians migrated across the Pacific to South America. Instead, it seems an ancient population in Siberia made its way both across to the Americas and down to the Western Pacific more than 20,000 years ago. There are still so many mysteries. Their genetic heritage is spread right across South America's indigenous groups, but only contributes around 2% to their genomes and none to North America's. So what happened to them in North America? We don't know. Also, why did the megafauna die out around the time of the Clovis arrival, but not with the first humans? Maybe they traveled mainly along the coast. And then there is the case of languages. Native American languages are stunningly varied. California alone was the home of as many as 86 different ones, classified into between 5 and 15 families, depending on definition. In the Americas as a whole, there were some 1,200 separate indigenous languages divided into perhaps 180 linguistic families. Compare that to Europe, where there are just four language families, with the vast majority of Europeans speaking an Indo-European language. How could the Native Americans have evolved so many different languages in only 13,000 years since the Clovis people arrived? Is that possible? And if many of those languages predate the Clovis people, perhaps from the first arrivals, why did their languages get adopted by the new arrivals, but they left almost none of their genetics? I should also say as an aside that all of this does not apply to the Inuit, Aleut, and other peoples of the far north. 
whose culture and language and genetics are separate from the people I'm calling Native Americans here. It seems that the American Arctic was settled only some 5,000 years ago, then experienced another wave around 1,000 years ago. Linguistically and genetically, these groups are much more closely related to people from Siberia. When I use the term Native American throughout this video, I'm speaking for the hemisphere as a whole, minus those in the Arctic. So while the Clovis arrival was undoubtedly a turning point in the story of the hemisphere, and there is broad scientific agreement that they weren't the first ones in the Americas, almost everything about those first settlers is absolutely still a mystery. As geneticist Razib Khan writes, these unknown people who occupied the new world for nearly 10,000 years before the arrival of the ancestors of modern indigenous people remain like ghosts to us. Their ecological footprint was light enough not only to allow for the flourishing of Pleistocene megafauna, but it was also minimal enough that archeologists denied their existence for decades and geneticists failed to pick up their trace. The mystery of when and how humans first arrived in the Americas is still unfolding. And that is not the only mystery that continues to puzzle us, for another comes from the very heart of South America, hidden in the Amazon jungle. Were there civilizations in the rainforest? That is the subject of the next video.